Hello and welcome to Nunley Math. I am your host, Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Um, it's been a little while since I've been back with you. It's been really crazy at school, uh, so I haven't had as, uh, as much opportunity to update these as I would have liked. Uh, but here's a, a lesson that I thought would be valuable for you to have access to. Um, it does rely on a few concepts that I taught my students in class that um, I have not presented here on, uh, on YouTube. So there may be some gaps in learning here. I'll do my best to go back and fill those um, with some additional uh, videos before too awful long. Um, but again, my primary purpose here is to get this available to my students uh, in my classroom, but I hope it's valuable to you as well. You'll notice we're talking about graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Um, to get us started with that, what I thought I'd do is I'd give you two linear equations and ask you to take just an, uh, a few moments to try and graph those on your own. Um, I'd strongly suggest pausing the video and trying that on your own, and then we'll take just a minute or two and talk about them together. I am going to assume you have already done that, and I'm going to walk you through a couple different ways that we can graph linear equations. When I look over here at this first linear equation on the left, y equals negative 3x plus 5. I happen to notice that this is in slope-intercept form. Notice that you have y equals m, your slope, negative 3, x plus 5, your y-intercept. So if I have a slope of negative 3, or as a uh, improper fraction, negative 3 over 1, and I have a y-intercept of 0, 5. This should be very easy for me to graph. I start off at that y-intercept, that 0, 5, and I use this slope to tell me how I need to move in order to plot my other points. Remember, slope is rise over run, so this says I have a, says I have a rise of negative 3 every time I move to the right one space. So down 1, 2, 3 to the right one space, gives me my next dot. Down from there, one, two, three, to the right, gives me my next dot, and I'll just continue that pattern for whatever space I have. Remember, it doesn't matter if the negative sign is on the three or if you move it down here to the one, you could do up three and backwards one from that spot and get another point. It shouldn't matter, it still falls in the line. And then, of course, you connect those. And we remember that every dot and every fraction and every decimal combination, every coordinate that falls on that line is a solution to this statement. Or if you plug in any x-y combination, it will make this statement true. Over here in my second graph, 6x plus 2y equals 12, I happen to notice that this is in standard form ax plus by equals c. And whenever something's in standard form, I have a couple different options. I could rearrange it to slope-intercept form, but that's a lot of work. Most of the time, what I'm going to do is use the graphing intercepts method to graph this. In other words, when I look at this uh, equation, I'm going to ask myself, what happens if x is a 0? Well, 6 times 0 becomes a 0, and this goes away, leaving me with just 2y equals 12. 2y equals 12 is a very simple equation to solve. It gives me a y of 6. So when x is 0, y is 6. I then repeat this process by making my y a 0. If I do 2 times 0, this becomes 0 and goes away. I'm left with the equation 6x equals 12 or x equals 2. Now I did go through that pretty quickly. If you struggled with following along with that, I would suggest you go back and watch a video on graphing equations or linear equations when they're in standard form. That is not our focus today. Instead, I want to remind you that the point 0, 6 says go over 0, up 6. The point 2, 0 says go over 2, up 0. And you can draw your line. Every point on that line is a combination of x's and y's that would make this statement true. Hopefully that refreshes that in your memory. Let's, let's expand on that just a little bit. Here I have an inequality. x plus y is greater than 3. x plus y is 
greater than 3. Remember, there are some combinations of x and y that we could use that would equal 3. There are some combinations of x and y that we could use that would be greater than 3. And there are some combinations of x and y that would be less than 3. For example, 5 plus 5 would be greater than 3. 2 plus 1 would equal 3. And negative 3 plus negative 3 would be less than negative 3. There's lots of different possibilities for x's and y's, but all of them will meet one of those three conditions, either greater than, less than, or equal to. So if I want to find which values are greater than 3, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start off by forming a boundary line. A boundary line by graphing x plus y equals 3 using the same method we used on the previous slide. Now since this is in standard form, I'm probably going to do this with intercepts. You could rearrange it to slope-intercept form if you like. If x is a 0, y is a 3. If y is a 0, x is a 3. If you're struggling with graphing by intercepts, I'd suggest you go back and watch a video on that. That is not our focus today. If I were to graph 0, 3, it appears here. If I were to graph 3, 0, it appears here. And then I can draw a line that passes through those points, and it will represent every combination of x and y that equals 3. But it's important to realize that even though we graph this line, nothing on this line is a solution to our original inequality. Everything on this line is going to equal 3. I don't want things that equal 3. I want things that are bigger than 3. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and draw that boundary line, but I'm going to draw it using a dotted line. You'll remember when we did our unit on functions that we said dotted lines show important things that are not solutions. Everything on here is a solution to x plus y equals 3. Nothing on here is a solution to my original inequality. x plus y is greater than 3. So here's what I'm going to do. One side of this, um, this line is a half plane. You have a half plane above. You also have a half plane below. One side is going to represent every combination of x and y that is greater than 3. The other side is going to represent every combination of x and y that is less than 3. We don't happen to know which one is which. Now you might be able to generate a pretty good guess, but depending on um, which side of the inequality your variables are on, whether they're positives or negatives, it really um, there, there's a lot of things that can affect which side is which. So here's what we do. After we've found our boundary line and we want to determine which side is which, we're going to pick a test point and we're just going to check and see if it works. Most people are going to test 0, 0. You'll notice 0, 0 is down here below our line. It's in the uh, yellow shaded side. And 0, 0 is going to be easy to work with. So I take my original inequality, I plug in 0, 0, and I simplify. And then I just look and see, is 0 greater than 3? No, it isn't. That tells me that 0, 0 is not a solution to this inequality. In fact, if 0, 0 is not a solution to this inequality, nothing on this entire side will be a solution to this inequality. These are all the values that are less than 3. Everything on the blue side are the values that are greater than 3. See how that works? We find that boundary line. That's going to give us our equals. And then we've got to decide which side is greater and which side is less. We're only going to shade in the side that's greater. Um, notice I, I have them both shaded in for now, and I have them both labeled. But uh, from here on out, we're only going to shade the side that is, or that actually meets our condition. <clears throat> Here's a second one. Um, y minus 2x is greater than or equal to 4. Just like before, I'm going to start off by using the equal sign. That's going to give my boundary between those that are greater and those that are less. It is in standard form, 
So I'm going to graph this by intercepts. Once again, that's not our focus. If you're struggling with that, you need to go back and watch a video on that. Negative 2, 0. 0, 4. And here's my boundary line. Now notice, this time, the things that are equal to 4 are part of my solution. I want those things that are greater than or equal to 4. So I'm going to make this a solid line because everything on this line is a solution. And then everything on one side of this, this line will also be a solution. The question is, which side? So I'm going to pick a test point. Most of the time I will pick 0, 0 as long as it doesn't fall on the line that I've drawn because 0, 0 is easy to work with. I rewrite the original inequality, plug in the zeros, I end up with a statement that is false. Because it is false, the side that contains 0, 0 is not a solution to my inequality. The other side is. How about graph y is less than negative 2? As always, I'm going to start with y equals negative 2. Hopefully you remember that y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line through negative 2 on the y-axis. And you get this. Notice, once again, I've made it dotted because I only want those things that are less than negative 2. The things that are equal to negative 2 show me where my boundary is, but they are not part of the solution to the problem. I'm going to test 0, 0 again. y is less than negative 2 is my uh, inequality. Since y is a 0, I plug it in. This is false. I'm going to shade the side that does not have 0, 0 on it. Nothing above this line is less than negative 2. Everything below this line makes this statement true. Here's two more. I would recommend that you pause the video and try these on your own. I would do the first one, then watch the video, then I would do the second one, then watch the video so you can see how they're worked out one at a time. Because you've already done this on your own, I am going to go through these fairly quickly. The one on the left, y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 5, is in slope-intercept form. I'm going to solve the equation. My slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is the coordinate 0, 5. There's 0, 5. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And there's your line. Notice the line is solid because in my original inequality, I'm including all the equal to's. I'm including all the equal to's. I want to decide which side to shade, so I'm going to test 0, 0. There's the original inequality. I plug them in. I simplify. Is it true? Yes, it is. Because 0, 0 does work, that tells me that everything that's on this side, along with the 0, 0, is going to be a solution to the inequality. Everything over here would be a solution to y is greater than. And of course, we're including the line because we include the equal to. Last one of these. y minus 3x is less than 0. I set up the equation. I actually decided to rearrange this to slope-intercept form by adding 3x to both sides. Your slope is 3. Your y-intercept is 0, 0. Graph your y-intercept up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, and so on. Notice I used a dotted line. The dotted line is because equal to is not part of my solution. One side is going to have the things that are less than 0. The other side is going to have the things that are greater than 0. I don't know which one is which. I'm going to use a test point. Now, ordinarily, I like to pick the point 0, 0, because it's easy to work with. However, in this case, 0, 0 happens to be on the line. So because it's a dotted line, I already know 0, 0 is not going to be a solution. What I want to do is test something on one side or the other. So I need to pick a point that's not on the line. How about 5, 0? That's way over here. There's the original inequality. Um, notice I went ahead and plugged it in. 
negative 15 is less than 0 is true, I want to shade the side with 5, 0 on it. There's your solution. Two last minute things I need to make sure I point out. Number one, if you're asked whether an ordered pair is a solution, all you're going to do is rewrite the original inequality, substitute the values in, and see if the statement is true. In this case, um, wow, I put yes, it is true. 7 is not less than negative 3. This should be a big no. This statement is false. Sorry, I got uh, a little carried away there. This is a no. Didn't proof that well enough, did I? Always take time to go back and show your work. Double check to make sure you're not doing careless little things like this. It's embarrassing. There we go. Having said that, let me go back to my pointer. Maybe not. All right. The last thing is sometimes these will appear as word problems. You can spend at most $10 on grapes and apples for a fruit salad. Write and graph a linear inequality that represents the amount of grapes and apples you can buy. Identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. Notice we're looking at two things, how many grapes we can buy and how much we can spend on apples. How much money we can spend on grapes and how much money we can spend on apples. And we're told that we can spend at most $10. That means the money I spend on grapes and the money I spend on apples combined has to be less than or equal to 10. We talked in an earlier unit about this phrase, at most. At most means it can be less than this amount or it can be this amount. Notice this inequality is in standard form. Once you have the inequality, it's just like all the other problems we've done. I'm going to find the boundary line. This one I'm going to do with intercepts, 10, 0, and 0, 10. Notice on my graph, I did go ahead and label my axes. Any word problem is going to have a title as well as labels on the axes. There's 0, 10. There's 10, 0. I connect my dots to show my line. Notice the uh, line is solid because these values will equal $10, and that's okay. Do notice as well that they stop at the x-axis and the y-axis because we can't have negative grapes or negative apples. I want to look and see which combinations are going to be less than. That's going to be these down here. Notice um, I did not take the time to do a test point here, but I should have. Uh, if I were to test 1, 1, 1 plus 1 would be less than 10. So that would work. I need to go back and make sure I show that in my examples. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been beneficial to you. Please take the time to like and subscribe and leave us a comment in the comment section. Um, and uh, we, we would really appreciate that. Hopefully, um, if this has been valuable to you, you'll let us know. And if you have something specific you'd like us to spend some time talking about, uh, we'd love to hear that as well. Best of luck to you. You guys take care, all right? Good luck.